Hello again, outdoor enthusiasts. It's time for some more outdoor time. Now, in this video, we are doing some horseback riding. This is in Terlingua, Texas, which is in the vicinity of Big Bend National Park in Texas. And we used a outfitter who I really, really enjoyed. I'll put their information down in the description box if you want to check them out if you're ever in the area. Anyway, I didn't put any music or anything over this video. I really wanted you guys just to feel like you were right there in the saddle riding along with us. So on that note, let's go ahead and get into it. Yeah, eventually we do plan on um, living in the West, uh, mostly full time. Like I don't think we'll ever sell our home in Georgia but maybe we'll rent it out or something, but we do plan to live in the West. We actually bought like this off-grid property in um, Southern Colorado and some in Arizona too. And it's way out there. <laughs> and the plan is to start working on that um, year after year so that, you know, we can retire there. That is so yeah, cool. yeah. We're in Southern Colorado. So it's this little town called Blanca. <laughs> in the san luis valley oh no there's nothing so we'll never be able to have um power we'll never be able to we have to like have a well we'll have to do solar um and septic but it is quiet i mean you you go for miles and don't see anybody else <laughs> yeah and it was so cheap it was like seriously so cheap like no one believes me when i tell them how cheap we got it we got like um we got a couple of different plots. We got a 10 acre plot for less than $10,000. And our five acre plots were like 4,800 bucks. So are you gonna have to do water in Colorado? How did you choose that place? Um, I think I was just looking, I was Googling one day and I was like, okay, affordable land with moderate weather, and like no grizzly bears. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. It was after we went to Nevada, and we had an amazing time in Nevada. And we did Red Rock Canyon. We did um, Valley of the Fire. That should be a national park. It's otherworldly. Salt signs with the cheap. Remember the cheap land signs and stuff. Yeah. Well, I saw. I saw. Okay. Ooh, I saw advertisement for cheap land actually years ago when we were in. Um, what was it, Thermal City, California by the Salton Sea? Yeah. Yeah. So, and talk about a regret. Okay, that's a whole other story right there. Let me tell this one before I forget. So, years ago, was it 2017 maybe? Palm Springs. Yeah, Palm Springs. I don't know. Anyway, we went to Palm Springs. We did uh, 29 Palms. We did uh, Joshua Tree. We did that whole route. And when we went to Thermal City, California, and that's where they have the Salton Sea. And if you don't know what the Salton Sea is, it's that area where like back in the heyday, like during Eisenhower's presidency, it was like Palm Springs. So all the rich, all the who's who of Hollywood, they would go to um, that area to enjoy the yacht clubs and, you know, just living the good life, right? It used to be. So now it's like a scene out of Mad Max <laughs> because at some point the salinity of the Salton Sea got so high that everything that lived in it died. Like when you go to the Salton Sea now, it's literally, have you seen Mad Max? I haven't. Oh, okay. Well, it's like this post-apocalypto type or post-apocalypse type world. It's, it's crazy. Everything shut down. Everything's abandoned. No one lives there. Uh, it's, it's, if people think Terlingua is a ghost town, they haven't seen nothing. Trust me. If they go to the Thermal City, California by the Salton Sea, that is a true ghost town. So you see like all these old 1950s diners and stuff that just closed down, everyone left. Because with the Salton Sea no longer being a vacation destination, uh, all the rich and everything they left, all the yacht clubs closed, everything shut down. And the whole area smells like dead fish. It smells like death. Because just imagine, it looks so strange 
in the middle of the desert in a hot afternoon, you see this massive inland sea. There's no jet skis, there's no boats, no one on the water. They have the whole area fenced off because the salinity is just dangerous. And so um, only one type of creature still can survive in it now. It's some sort of tilapia from Mozambique. Really which, yeah, which I don't even know how that got here. <laughs> but, and that was years ago. So even now, probably nothing lives. Maybe nothing lives in the, um, in the Salton Sea now. <laughs> but anyway, they had acres, entire acre plots, and you can get as many as you want it for just $89 an acre. Yeah, because it was a wasteland, yeah, right? So, but long story short, <laughs> when I was looking at some of that land, I decided, okay, this is a wasteland, it always will be. I don't care if it's free, we don't want nothing to do with it. How about right now, there's this multi-billion dollar project in the works where they're going to try to reverse the salinity of the Salton Sea, make it viable again to basically make it like a second Palm Springs, like it used to be. How far from Palm Springs is it? Um, it was like a couple hours, a couple of hours yeah. Okay. And so now if you go look at some of those same acres they're like 6500 an acre so talk about kicking myself because i could have got it for like 89 bucks an acre <laughs> and even if it never pans out for the long-term plans it still would have been a great profit if i sold it now at 6500 per acre <laughs> I know. So anyway, lesson learned with that, but that was interesting. Um, but anyway, getting back to the original question, um, I just started getting into looking for land after that point. And when I Googled and I was trying to figure out, okay, where's their affordable land that's not like a wasteland and no grizzly bears. I'm pretty adventurous and we do a lot of hiking and stuff like that. But the only thing that really freaks me out is grizzly bears. <laughs> and I came upon um, Blanca, Colorado. It's kind of like an alpine desert is what they call it. So it's dry, yes, but the weather only gets about 82 degrees at the hottest. So, you know, for a desert, that's fantastic, 82 degrees. No, but there's tons of elk. Tons of elk. And even when we went to, because I bought the land sight unseen because I was so excited about it. And it was so cheap, I figured, okay, if it ends up being like a big sinkhole or something, at least it was cheap. Um, but when we got there, it was, it oh surpassed our expectations. I mean, beautiful mountain vis vistas, but flat buildable land and, oh. But I think that's the way to go, especially these days. I mean, even if you're not really doing it for the peace and the freedom to do things or live life the way you desire, expense. You know, the expense is just outrageous. I mean, in the summer months, I know back at home, when we are running like the ACs and everything like that, our electric bill is almost $800 a month. But yeah, so the cost of utilities end up being almost as much as the mortgage payment, you know? Yeah, that's how it And it's like you can't enjoy a quality of life when every dime you make is just going right out of your hands just for utilities. Nothing fun, nothing enjoyable, you know, just for day-to-day -day living. That's just not cool to me because it's like, well, what's the point of working if you don't get a chance to enjoy something? <laughs> That's why you see all the cans. Oh, okay. And it's over 50 years old, so it's artifact now. <laughs> Can't clean it up. Yeah. <laughs> Don't try recycling it now, huh? <laughs> wow. Oh, I see.
Very cool. Same thing. I know, right? You should do it every day and still see I know. Yeah. See, we haven't done any horseback riding back home in Georgia because with all the trees, you don't have these wide open vistas like this, you know? Yeah. Because to me, this is what makes it amazing. It's just this wide open views. Look at those big old chunks of rock. That's just wild. soil it looks green that's what's wild it's like green dirt so such a big boat i know it's so cool <laughs> It does. That one you can drop behind, I drop behind. It does, you're right. There's one rock up there that looks like it's ready to go. I would love to see something like that. Not when I'm underneath it, obviously. <laughs> That is just wild. Just see these big chunks so close like this. Mm -hmm. And the colors, just look at these colors, man. Wow. 
lot of people come out here and camp. I know, right? I've seen tons of campfire. <laughs> Cool. Well, this rock isn't as solid as we think it is. Look <clears throat> how that's decayed and deteriorated. So you can see why all of these big old chunks here have fallen off the top. Interesting. Created quite the debris field, hasn't it? <laughs> ah, yeah, Alaska. I, I, I definitely want to go one day. I'm kind of on the fence simply because the way we like to go out and do these like all day hikes and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm not scared of a lot of things, but I am terrified of the grizzly bears. I don't blame you for that. I think that when it comes to... I've been around black bear. Mm -hmm. I've been in mountain lion territory my whole life. Mm -hmm. And I've never been afraid like mm -hmm. I have been when I've been in grizzly territory. Right? <laughs> I tell you, my mom, she's really brave because um, she's done Yellowstone. Like I say, she works seasonally there and stays there, but um, she's done Yellowstone a few times and she would blow my mind because she would go on these long hikes by herself. And at this point, she was still in her 60s, you know? <laughs> and she's in her 70s now, but I'm telling you, she's in great shape. Oh yeah, she's in better shape than I am. <laughs> But I mean, she could run circles around all of us probably. But um, she would do these long, long all day hikes and just have nothing but some bells. Right. The uh, oh my Did goodness. She, bring spray? she never brought the spray. That's what kills me. It's like nothing but the bells. Mm -hmm. Bells and prayer. <laughs> that being said, I definitely will go to Yellowstone at some point. We'll, we'll go to some of those areas. but. We'll just be very, very smart about it, you know. Yeah. Try to make sure we're hiking in groups. And of course, we'll have our spray and everything. And Don't bring the, the salami on your hiking Exactly. <laughs> Yellowstone and glaciers and the Tetons all right there. Oh yeah, I'm excited for it one day. Maybe 2025, who knows? What's your next trip? Uh, is this going to be Tahoe? Almost looks like salt, I guess. Yep. On the walls there. Salt. Uh -huh. Cooling with snow. <laughs> what were they mining out? They were mining cinnabar ore to extract mercury from. Hmm.
Looks like a pile of mustard. Look at that. <laughs> How many years did Vincent does that operate? This mine closed in the 70s. 1970s. Oh, wow. And then that's when it became a ghost town. Huh. The only thing that people did out here was mine. Wow. And that's why the ivy decided once they got here to stop it from being a ghost town any longer. There's a lot of parts of West Virginia that are becoming like this. Getting crowded? No, that are turning into ghost towns. Oh. People mm -hmm. are leaving West Virginia? Well, I don't think they ever had many, but yeah, they, um, I was watching this documentary that was showing how a lot of people in West Virginia, even up until like not too long ago, yes, their main source of revenue was working in various coal mines or whatever, which I'm like, I thought that was a thing in the past. But anyway, um, since a lot of that left, poverty in some of those areas is mind boggling. Be a lot of people leaving a lot of poverty, like the type of poverty that you would expect to see, like in Haiti or something, like right here in the United States. It's wild. Just because there's no industry, no industry, no jobs. So down there used to be a golf course. <laughs> what? I know. It, it was when? A was golf, golf course. That was a golf course? Yeah, down there. That is unbelievable. And they had a watering system, so I'm assuming they have real grass. What? I wonder why they did away with it. That would have been an awesome tea time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I truly hope you guys enjoyed the video today and your time outdoors with me. If so, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe. That way you can join me on my next adventure. But until then, be good to yourself and do something that makes you happy today.